In one of the most famous moments in Critical Role's history, Joe stole the hand of Vecna as his character Archon. And it was one of those moments that just was shocking and dramatic and now has made it into the very lore of D&D. I talked to Joe about what that experience was like and how it feels for that to now all be canon. Seems like everyone in the gaming world, when I bump into them, they want to they they just they need to they need to talk to me about the hand, and like I'll give you an example. I went to Matt Mercer and, and Marisha Ray's wedding, and I took my wife, and she hadn't met any 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 I want to say any of those people, any of my Dungeons and Dragons you know friends and, and and acquaintances. She really hadn't met many of them, and it was like a scene out of The Godfather, where I was sitting in a chair and there were people lined up to shake my hand and tell me how amazing the stealing of, of the hand of Vecna was during those episodes. And it was like a line. And it was like, I don't know, it was like your wife realizing that you have this double life, that you're not who she thought you were, you're actually Don Corleone. It's in this other <laughs> world. And uh, I had to explain, you know, because I had explained to her before because I came home excited because there were so many factors that had to fall into place in order for that hand to become available. There were, I had so many contingencies planned out, if this, then that, but if that happens, then that, and this, and that, and I couldn't give any of it away. So I had to have this poker face the whole time as my brain is just calculating. And I also have to have them just feel like, I'm I'm the friend. I'm 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 their I'm their buddy Archon, who's helping them defeat Vecna, and um, and you know it's evil with good against a greater evil and all of that, and um, and so I had so much planned out about that, and I also knew exactly where he was going to go because there's things like scrying, there are things like counter spells, there are things that could have happened that could have blocked Archon from getting out of there with the hand. I mean, initially, my thoughts were, how am I gonna get out with the hand physically? Like, could I jump on the Gloomstalker and fly out? Well, no, they have like elves and, and a druid who could shoot spells 300 feet. I, there's no way I can get away. Any way I did the calculations, the only way I was possibly going to get away is chopping off my own hand and putting the hand of Vecna on. Like, which, why would, I, why would I not do that anyway? <laughs> I mean, and from a cinematic standpoint, right. there's no more cinematic moment than that. And if somehow we beat this thing and the hand gets left behind and I can pull that off, like I, I have to, there's gonna be a moment where they could have a reaction and I need, I need it to be so pure and I need to sell this moment so much just on an acting level in order to get away. And, and I thought, well, Vax is gonna die. That's where I make my move. They're gonna, they're gonna huddle around him. They're gonna have tears in their eyes. It, it's gonna be like a five-year culmination for them. And that's when I strike. <laughs> and so I waited for that moment. And when it hit, I had a whole speech prepared. But I couldn't let them on. I couldn't read it. I couldn't, act, you know. So I just went into this very calm speech and let the silence kind of play as I was speaking and chopped the hand off and, and got out of there. Now, once he gets out with the hand, what happens then? Well, I can only teleport onto the same plane. So I would have had to work it out. Archon would have had to work it out with one of his minions to meet him at this rendezvous point. If things went well and he was still alive, he'd meet at this rendezvous point. And I needed someone with the ability to plane shift to get him away. And that's how Krull was born. I thought, okay, plane shift, plane shift. Okay, it's cleric, cleric ability, death domain cleric. He's the oath breaker. Of course he has the death domain cleric. Well, what's a cool race for death? <sighs> Tortles, of course. Tortles are the one race in this game that people just see as this little, this dopey kind of like, you know, they, they have like a stigma attached to them. And I thought, I'm gonna tear all that down. I'm gonna make the most badass, demonic, evil, like undead turtle. 
and and that's how uh, that's that those were the beginnings of, of Krull. And so I, I figured Krull would be waiting for him somewhere else on the continent. He also has the ability to heal Archon after the battle. Who knows what's happened to Archon? He can feed him a potion of vitality to get rid of the effects of his barbarian frenzy, and then would plane shift would open this portal for them to shift into Avernus, man. And that's where the story went. And there, Adam Lee and I are having lunch at Wizards, and he mentions that the next book is Avernus. They're just in the baby planning stages of this Avernus adventure. And I went, I went, well, Tiamat's there, right? And he said, yeah, she'll be there in some capacity. I said, I said, well, that's where Archon is. He said, what do you mean? I said, He's in this tower. And I went on this whole thing, this story I had created about this tower that, that Tiamat rose up out of the volcanic rock for Archon to stay in and, and figure out the, the powers of the hand in order to teleport her out of this imprisonment. And there would be an army that would gather around, this army camp gathered around this tower. And there would be warlocks that would see Archon as their patron now. And there would be... Uh, armies of undead and this menagerie of celestials that Krull was keeping in the, the bowels of the tower uh, in order to steal their essences and, you know, like uh, grind down the horns of the unicorns to feed to Archon to fight off the necrotic power of Vecna's hand. And, and, uh, and he would have these artifact squads that were out finding artifacts and bringing them back to this tower that would be this hub of evil and, and the dragon armies. And it would become like this Ariakas sort of character, this mixture of Ariakas and, and, uh, and Verminard together in this tower. And uh, he would have his minions and his armies. And, and I thought maybe the players could run into him there. <laughs> and, and if there are these chains that are holding down El Terrell, you know, the question was, well, what would happen if you combined all of Tiamat's breath weapons at once? Like, what happens then? You know, is, and, uh, and if you needed her help, what if you needed her help? You, made it, you needed to make a pact with this devilish, chaotic, evil goddess, but you had to strike the deal with Archon to get to her. And so you had to do something for him. And so there was a question of how were you going to play that? And, and I thought that became a really interesting basis for a fun adventure or a fun part of this adventure. And so Adam and I just got to work. I just started sending Adam just pages and pages of story. And we started talking back and forth. And, um, and then I just started building out the rest of the characters and some of the monsters that you would face. And, um, and a lot of it had come from me playing Archon out in these various campaigns everywhere, like around the globe. I played with all the best DMs and I played as Archon and wrote these stories. And so there's a lot of it that's it feels lived in because there were a couple of years where I did nothing but play Archon in order to gain, you know, this weathered quality to him. So he just wasn't the static NPC. He was an NPC with a backstory who has a lot of history, who comes from somewhere. And people that dig around online can, they can watch that story and see the progression. It's one thing to have your home group and your home campaign. And I've been DMing my whole life. So a lot of my NPCs, when I run into my friends from elementary school, they still remember those NPCs. And they bring them up. And they existed for us. But now to think that these characters that I created and designed are now can be enjoyed by people all over. I, I mean, I'm really excited to see what people do and I'm excited to, uh, I, you know, I need to do my, my Reddit AMA and to, you know, and really get in there and, and I, cause I want to hear the stories. I want to hear how people, how people play him. But I also had to make sure that Archon was going to be consistent with what was in my brain because there was a bit when I started turning in material and possible storylines, what was coming back or what was being talked about was being misconstrued. So there was a bit like, oh, Archon has this friend who's a turtle, and then he has this other friend who's a minotaur, and they all live in a tower together, and it's all of a sudden it's three men and a baby with, you know, Archon, Krull, and Toro, and Chango, you know, and, and it's like, no, 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 he's, he's a general, he is, he is the high lord in the, like a Dragonlance sense, and these are these are these are these are 
these military advisors that are underneath him. This is a bodyguard. This is a, he's a sad. The, the Minotaur is a savage, and Krull is this evil mastermind. Like Krull isn't going to talk to your player characters unless there's something to be gained. He's not going to allow them to live, and he's going to hold, he'll only hold off this wall of undead behind him until he finds out what you have or could get in order to coerce him into going and talking to the master, to Archon. So uh, I had to make sure that the flavor was there. And so there were, there, were, um, there were a lot of talks about that. Thank you, Joe, for talking about the Hand of Vecna and how you stole it. I am Todd Kenrick, your host. Thank you so much for watching.